How do you not get front run, sandwich attacked, and MEV'd in the ETH ecosystem? Let's find out. So for those of you who don't know, MEV is this thing where just by nature of you sending a transaction, there's a chance that you're actually losing more hey. money than what shows up in MetaMask. I'll leave some docs in the description for you to learn more. And the question then becomes, okay, well, how do we protect ourselves against this thing? Well, Flashbox has this product called Flashbots Protect, which if you go to the documentation for it, we can see here it says, Flashbots Protect makes it easy for everyday users and developers to use Flashbots for front running protection. That sounds like that's what I'm looking for. But then you keep reading and it says, we abstract away the complexities of submitting bundles to the Flashbots auction and make integrating as simple as adding a URL to MetaMask. That sounds less like it's protecting me. And then if you go to the RPC, go to the quick start, you continue to read, Flashbots Protect RPC allows regular users to easily submit their transactions to the Flashbots auction which if you go to the Flashbots auction, the Flashbots auction is a permissionless, transparent and fair ecosystem for efficient MEV extraction and front running protection, which preserves the ideals of Ethereum. So which one is it? Am I getting protected from MEV or am I not getting protected from MEV? I've asked this question on places like Stack Exchange ETH. I've similarly asked this on the Flashbots forum, where I've basically gotten a response that says, Yes, transactions sent through Flashbots Protect are not seen by bots either in the public mempool or the Flashbots private mempool. So they are protected against both. But you see where my confusion is. Yes, you're protected. No, we're going to submit your transaction to the Flashbots auction. Which one is it? And then finally, we have this line, get MEV back. If your transaction creates MEV, you get 90% of it back through MEV share. So it sounds like I am going to get MEV'd but gonna get most of the MEV back. So as scientists, we are going to test this theory by recreating the Scott B how to get front run on Ethereum mainnet experiment. He did this experiment a few years ago. He shows how easily it is for bots to front run you and we're gonna do the same thing. So we're here in Remix. We have this contract called withdraw me. We're gonna have an error here called bad withdraw. If something breaks, we're gonna have a secret hash that's going to include some password, success and fail. We're going to have a constructor where we send money to it with this secret hash, right? So we're going to have a password. We're going to encode it so it's a secret hash. We're going to store that on chain. And only if you have the password will you be able to decrypt this hash. And that's what our withdrawal function is going to do. It's going to take this password in. If the password cracks the hash, great. We will get all the money back. Otherwise, we'll revert and we will emit a success. Otherwise, we will emit a fail. And then we have a balance function to see what all of our money is. So this is our whole contract that we're going to be playing with. We can even make sure that this works by testing it in Remix. So I'm going to, it's called withdraw me here. We're going to give it one ether on the deployment. We're going to give it a lot less when we test it. And we're going to come up with a password. We're going to use cast to come up with a password. Our password is going to be Sign up for CodeHawks123 Frogs Rule. Enter. This is the hash of that password. So sign up for CodeHawks123 Frogs Rule creates this hash. So only if you have this password should you be able to get this hash. So we're going to take this, paste it in for the secret hash. We'll hit deploy with one. We deploy our contract down here. If we hit balance, we see we have a balance of one. We can see this secret hash. Now, if we take this password, copy it, paste it in here. I hit with, oh, and actually if we scroll up, we see we have 97.999 ETH in here. If we pass this password in, hit withdraw, we scroll up, we see we have 98. We see the balance of this contract is now zero. And if we pull up our terminal, we see our most recent transaction. We should scroll down and we should see a success on this withdraw function here. Scroll down. We do, we do need to see a success. If we were to put anything else in here, like, one, two, three, four, one, and we hit withdraw, it would still go through, but it would emit a failure right here, a failure event. Now that we've tested it out, we're going to go ahead and test it on mainnet. I'm gonna spend some real money to do this. So the way it works is first, we're going to test it without Flashbots Protect, and we should see ourselves get front run, and then we're going to test it with Flashbots Protect, and we should not get front run. Let's see if that happens. So here we are with my MEV tester MetaMask. I have 0.05 ETH in here or $94, hopefully enough that it's tantalizing for a bot to want to steal from us. We're going to go ahead and hit withdraw, but what's probably going to happen here is some other 
node is going to see our withdraw transaction in the mempool. They're going to copy our transaction and they're going to take the money out before we do. So let's go ahead. Same deal. And we're using a regular old Infura endpoint for this. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to delete this. We're going to go to injected provider MetaMask. We're going to have to go to way. So we're going to do how much money should we put in here? So we want to do 0.025 ether. So that's this much way. We're going to copy that. Paste it in here for way. Oh, excellent. We're going to deploy with this hash, which has, which has our password here. Let's go ahead and deploy this transaction to mainnet. MetaMask pops up. It's going to cost us another $16 in gas. Uh, it's going to confirm. A few inches later. And great. We have our withdraw me contract. If we hit balance, we can see the balance in here. We can see the secret hash. We copy it. We go to ether scan. We can indeed see the contract here. We can indeed see the value in here and we can refresh and nobody's going to steal the money because a they'd have to find this contract. B, they'd have to verify this contract and C, they'd have to know our password. So right now it's very difficult for a bot to come and see it. But the instant, the instant we send our transaction, a bot is going to swoop in and steal the money from us. I'm going to copy this address I'm going to paste it in. I'll hit confirm. And just by me sending this transaction, I know it says completed now, but while it was pending, other bots got to sniff out and smell that transaction. So they probably front ran me. And if you can see here, you see that we didn't get that $2 back. We go to our transactions here. It says, oh, hey, there was a withdrawal that went through and this is our transaction. But if we look in our wallet, we didn't get that money back. There's definitely less than 0 0.025 ETH in here. So we didn't get it. You got scammed. The balance is clearly zero. If we click on the transaction, the withdraw, we can see zero money went through. But we can go to internal transactions and we can see some other jerk snagged it from us and took our money. And they paid 532 GUE for it, which if we do ETH converter, they paid about $45 in here to get $50 worth of ETH. You can see in this internal transaction, transfer 0.025 ETH from somebody to somebody and then from that somebody to somebody else. And we can even see who sent it. We can see is this person here. So this person is obviously an MEV bot. It looks like they've got about $16,000 from their MEVing, right? And it looks like they actually score a find every, you know, every once in a while, right? So it's just running, creating them passive money. So we've seen us successfully get front run by an MEV bot and lose our $50. What an expensive experiment. Maybe I'll do try to do a little bit cheaper this time. So we're going to run this again, but this time we're going to use Flashbots Protect RPC and we'll see if we get front run. So we're in the exact same contract that we have, but I topped up our funds here back up to $100, 0.5 ETH here. And we're going to do the same thing, except now we're going to switch from Ethereum mainnet endpoint to our Flashbots Protect endpoint. They've got plenty of docs to teach you how to do this really easily. We're going to do a different password this time. This time it's going to be sign up for CodeHawks. Ka, ka, ka. One, two, three, four, five, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six. Cat. Boom. Here's our hash. We're going to copy this, come back over, get rid of this old contract that just rugged us. We're going to deploy this again. We're using the Flashbots Protect RPC, which shouldn't matter because we're just deploying. We're going to send 0 0.025 to 4 this time, a little bit less for these scammers. Paste that in here. We'll hit deploy. This thing comes up. Confirm. MetaMask comes up now. And again, this is just us deploying this. Go ahead and confirm. And once this goes through, we'll have another contract. What's kind of interesting, if you look at this on Etherscan, you get, get this little pop up. This transaction is made through the Flashbots Protect RPC and is not shared to the public Ethereum transaction pool. So that's kind of cool. It's going to take us a little bit longer to deploy this through Flashbots Protect because they have fewer nodes. Basically, they have to wait for one of their nodes to be able to submit a block. If we go back to our Etherscan, you can see we've created this contract. 
It's got zero point. It's got about forty-two dollars worth of ETH in it. And Flashbots Protect should protect us. We should not get front run. When I send a transaction, that transaction should be the one to get the money out, right? Well, let's find out. So we know what the password. Sign up for Code Hawks. Caw, caw, caw. This whole thing. Cat. Paste it in. Withdraw. Let's confirm. Now we can view this on Etherscan, and we should again see this transaction. This transaction is made through the Flashbots Protect RPC and not shared to the public Ethereum transaction pool. And we'll kick back and wait another 10 minutes. A few inches later. Actually, this one did not take 10 minutes. This one went through pretty quickly. It's already done. This one took about 60 seconds. The withdraw definitely went through. Do I have the money? Actually, surprisingly enough, in a great way, if we click our transaction and we scroll down, we see there's still zero value, but we can see we transfer 0 0.024 ETH from blah, blah, blah to this address. And this is us. So it looks like Flashbots Protect did protect us from MEV. So it looks like we do get front running protection. We didn't get a failed transaction, which was great. We did create MEV, but it was protected by the front running. It looks like it didn't do this MEV share thing. So maybe if our transaction created MEV outside of being front run, maybe that's where this MEV share would have kicked in. But so we have successfully verified that Flashbots protect does indeed protect you from MEV.